uh, right now we're going to be working on the recharging holes and uh, and get the old drill out. All right, here we go. Got to use a one eighth drill bit to make a tracer hole. As you can see, I'm using the drill and I'm hanging on to this at the same time, which is a big no-no. But since I'm making this video, this is the only way I can do this. All right, after you make your tracer hole, you're going to need a bigger drill bit. I'm not sure the size, but it's fairly large. Uh, it fits on there pretty good. So let's start making the hole bigger. All right, I got my bigger drill bit inside my drill. And unfortunately, this is the biggest drill bit my drill will take. So let's start drilling. Drill the other side. Now, as you can see, I got a rig inside this tube. That's because I don't want this drill bit going through the other side and making a dent. So that's a big plus. If you can find an old rag in your house, washcloth, uh, anything, really. After you're done with that, pull this out. You want to make the holes a little bit bigger. As you can see, it's not really too big, but we can kind of work with this with this drill. Here. Bring it around. Do the other side. Now what I'm doing, I'm making a round and round motion to make this hole a little bit bigger since the drill bit. It's not the size I need. Um, so we'll get back after these messages. One thing I forgot to mention. You're going to need a circular file. Because when you're drilling, the holes aren't going to be really that perfect. So what you do is you get your file, stick it in the hole, and start working it. And go by your eye. And that way you can make it more perfect well I took my circular file and I trimmed the holes up and it looks pretty good on both sides I also squared off the squares inside with my triangle file. I also sanded the inside and a couple things I forgot to show is that you gotta make your hole here squared off with your triangle file and we also have to make a hole here. Um, what I use, I use a 1 and 18th drill bit to do that. But I'll show you that later. What you wanna do is I'm going to pop these open now. So let's just stick a screwdriver in there. Pry it open a little bit. Take your needle nose pliers. And very carefully, you want to bend these up. You don't want to mark the saber up too much on the outside. Just grab it. Pull it up. Just like that. That's sticking out. Do the same thing on the other side. Grab it. Pull it up. You want to square them off a little bit. Just take your needle nose pliers, square them up, make them nice and flat. There you go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to want to get my Dremel and I'm going to carefully round these edges off. 
because they're a little too sharp. So let's try that now. There you have it. Round it off. Now, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this big drill bit, take it off the gun. Take your 118th drill bit, it's pretty tiny. What we're going to do is we're going to make the holes right on top, right there. Hole number one. Now you want to lengthen your drill bit a little bit to get on the other side. You don't want to drill from this side because your drill will hit the tube. So just go through your original hole you just drilled and drill it right through the other side. There you go. Both sides, perfect. Now as you can see it's starting to look like a Almost a genuine gray flex. Too bad it's not. Now you want to take your 118th drill bit. And you want to drill the hole in the bottom. And as you notice, I put the rag back into the chrome tube so the drill will not poke through the other side. Just carefully drill. There you go. I also, I took some sandpaper and I sat on the inside. So there's one thing I forgot to tell you is that you need to get some modeler silver paint so you can paint the inside and cover up the copper. All right, now what I want to work on is the bottom of the tube. Now you want to get a fender washer. I'm not sure exactly the right size, but all you have to do is eye it up. Go to a hardware store, get your metal tubing, Go to the fender washer, wherever they sell them at, and you can basically eye it up and figure out what size it is. Um, it's pretty basic how to do this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my five minute epoxy here. I'm going to mix it up, and I'm going to epoxy the edges of this fender washer and stick it on the bottom of the tube and let it dry. And what I have here over here is a, it's a heat lamp, actually. It's what they use, you can get them at pet stores, um, warm up their lizards or their snakes or whatever. Um, I use that to try to make a little uh, faster time having this dry. Um, a lot of people want a lot of these lightsabers. Time is, is definitely of the essence to making these um, for me. But if you're just making one for yourself, you don't need the light. Take your time, let it dry overnight if you want. Come back the next night and. Uh, Go from there. We'll do that. All right, I got my five minute epoxy here. I'm using an old piece of wood here. Actually, it's a part of a drawer. Um, as you can see, it's well used. It's probably my fifth drawer that I've had that I took apart and used. So what you need is a piece of metal or anything to really mix up the epoxy mix it up fairly thoroughly it gets kind of like a, a cloudy look to it round and round she goes alright 
pretty much set here. Now, take your epoxy and go right on the edges of it. Well, one edge looks like it's more round than the other, so I'm going to try the flat edge. I want to use the round edge because when you're setting the great, uh, great black, when you're setting the tube on top of this, it might slip off. So you use the flat edge to put your epoxy on top of. Go round and round with it. Very carefully. Take the excess off the sides so it won't drip down. Now the stuff's pretty tough. So once it dries, it ain't gonna come off. And you want it to come off. Alright. Adjust this video here. Get a little closer. Put it flat on the surface. There you go. Flat on the surface. Take your tube. Carefully put it right on top. Look at each side of the tube. Make sure it looks like it's metaled off. Pull around if you have to. There you go. Now we're going to let that dry for about 10 minutes. And uh, during the 10 minutes I'm letting it dry, I'm going to start working on the clamp. Um, we will be back again. There it is. While it's drying, we're going to make the clamp now. As you can see, I got my little heat light on there. Uh, it should take about maybe five minutes to dry. Even it's just five minutes epoxy. Well, I guess it will take five minutes to dry, but I'm gonna let it go for about ten minutes because I really want to dry. Because you have to drill into the bottom of that fender washer so you can put your ding ring on it to hang it from your belt. So I'm gonna let it dry, and uh, we'll be back and we're gonna start working on the clamp. Alright, this is the other tube that I was telling you about. You gotta get two 12 inch tubes, like I said before. Um, this one's pretty ready shape because I dropped it on the ground. I don't know how I did it, but it just fell right out of my hands. So find a spot where there's no scratches. Um, I see a couple good spots. Um, we're gonna get our template, wrap around the tube, and start cutting it. Alright. Now, like I said, with this video, I'm going to send you a copy of this template. Um, I will send you one copy. Um, you can go to Duck Store Library and make yourself a couple copies, just in case you goof up on the first copy. Cut it pretty perfectly. And you don't really want to go too much on the outside when you're doing this. Now, on my next video, I'm going to make... I'm going to be using the same template on how to make a working clamp. Because what I'm doing now is I'm taking this template and I'm just applying it towards this copper tube. Um, but on the working template, it's actually going to be bent where these little gray holes, gray uh, areas are at. Um, what I do is I use a small vise. I use a flat square copper rod and I make my bends that way making those but for now we're just going to concentrate on making this there you go I'm going to wrap this around the tube and we're going to start cutting alright now we're wrapping this a certain way I just noticed this what we're going to do is we're going to wrap it 
where the slit right here, right there, is on the outside. If you wrap it the other way, the slit will be partially covered and you ain't going to know where to cut. Take your template, get a piece of tape, hold the template, wrap it around, make sure it's lined up. There you go. Now we're going to cut on both sides. Now I'm also going to cut here and I'm going to drill each hole. I'll tell you in a moment what size drill bit to use for those holes. Now like I did in the tubing you're going to want to edge this out first. Take your Dremel, edge it out around the end. One side, I'll get back to you after I cut off the other side. There you have it. Now, I would suggest a dust mask also while you're cutting this because a lot of copper is everywhere. And since I haven't been using one for a while, I can surprise, I'll be surprised what my lungs are like right now. So starting next week, I'm getting a dust mask. Now, I did the rough cut. And what you do is you take your Dremel and you get pretty close to the template and while you're looking at it straight down take your drum off and if you see the copper poking on the other side of the template There you go. Pretty good. Now I'm going to work on the other side. There you go. Now we're going to cut this little slit area right here. Right where it's white, that's where you cut it. Now we're going to take our 5 and 32 drill bit and we're going to drill a hole right here. Now I would suggest to put a rag inside of this also. So let's get a rag. Stuff it in the hole. Like I said before, do not attempt to try to drill these on top of your legs. We're only doing this to make this video. So, if you see me drill into my leg, can you call an ambulance for me? Alright, you take your drill bit, tighten it up, right where the white's at. It's one hole. Three hole. 
and the fourth hole. Now my drill bits are pretty ragged. I've used these drill bits for a long time. You're not going to have as much trouble drilling these holes as I am because they're pretty dull. All right, after you make your holes, you want to take your drill and do the up and down motion because you want to get that white area out. Take your drill bit. Back and forth. There you go. This side, this side. Now what I'm also going to do now is I have to take my Dremel Now I have to cut a line in the middle, straight down, past the white hole, going all the way across. I'll show you why in a moment. There you go. Now you don't want to go all the way through with this. All right, you just want to make a mark. That's all you're doing, because this is where we have to cut it later on. There you go. See you, Mark. We're going to need this later on in the video. There's the holes, both sides. There's the slit. Now we're going to take our triangle rod. I'm going to stick it in each hole, square them off. And uh, when I'm done doing that, I'll get back to you. All right, what I did is I took my triangle rod. I squared the holes up. See how good that looks. Now another thing I forgot to mention. I have some tools to get. Is some 3M 180 grit sandpaper. And what you're going to want to do. Is you're going to want to sand the outside. Of the clamp. The other side. Round off the paper, sand the inside. Not the whole thing on the inside, but just the outer edges is good enough. Take a razor blade, and you want to cut out a excess copper that's sticking out on the side on the slit. Like so. Now, what you're going to need now is some sandpaper that's been used and abused, which this has. You're going to take this and you're going to want to sand the outside of it lightly. Not too hard, not too soft. Take it around, spin it around. If that don't work, go like this with it. We're going to want to give it that brushed aluminum look like the original gray flexes have. Now we're going to do the same thing to the tubing, but I don't think the glue is dried yet. But I'll check on that in a moment. There you go. See the sand marks? Got that brushed aluminum look. You don't want to do it too hard or you're going to have the copper poke through this. This chrome plating is not very thick on these tubes. Alright. Alright, let's check and see if this is dry. Looks like it is. Alright, take your paper, and you're going to want to sand the edges of it right on top, just slightly, not too hard. 
one way around. And grab a hold of it, spin it around, and slowly move the saber up while you're spinning. Go the opposite way. Go up. There you go. See the sand marks? Got a little glue here, but that come off. There you go. Now, I'll return when I'm just starting to sum of a clamp onto the tube. Alright, it seems pretty dry. You want to get your sandpaper and you want to sand the bottom of this. Fender washer. So it can have that brush aluminum look also. Now this hole will be covered up with the D-ring assembly that I'm going to show you how to make. Looks good. We'll be back. Okay, now we're going to assemble the clamp onto the tube. Now you're going to want to get your permanent marker. You're going to want to get your ruler. Now you're going to want to measure directly on top of the saber. You want to measure on the side. You can probably measure on the bottom, but I usually measure right on top. Take a ruler. Measure three and three fourths inches up I have it pretty release marked for my other savers I make it's almost four inches not quite like I said it looks like it's about three and three fourths inches so take your pen and you want to mark it I can't find my smaller ruler anywhere, so I have to deal with this monster of a ruler I have now. You want to mark it, three and three fourths, both sides of the ruler. All right, you can't really see it too well, but I have it marked here. I have it marked here. You want to get your clamp, and that line I was telling you about before. You want to get your Dremel, and you want to cut directly across that line. Now you want to line it up a little bit because it's kind of a rough cut. Trim it up a little bit. There you go. Take the clamp, put the lightsaber, put it right on the side. This goes on the right hand side. You see a lot of auctions on eBay where they have it on top or they have it on the left side, which is wrong. Keep it on the right side of the saber, just like this. This is where it's cut, where I cut it at, it's where it's smoothing out at. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get a pop rivet gun, which is another tool I forgot to mention. I'm going to drill a hole to slit closest to the other slit I just cut. See the slit right here? We're going to drill a hole right there through the saber. Now, you won't need, really need a rag for that if you're kind of careful putting this on. Kind of eye it up. Take your drill, drill it right on the side. See the hole? Now let me get my rib knot gun and my rivets and we'll pop rivet this clamp onto the tube. 
Uh, these are one eighth of an inch pop rivets, uh, three millimeters. On the bottom of the top, take your pop rivets. Stick it in the hole. Take your pop rivet gun. And pop rivet in place. Now we got to pop rivet the other side because the clamp is, as you can see, hanging off the edge is not too well. So you can tell I pop rivet here. We're going to pop rivet directly across the slit on the other side. Now you don't have to worry about these showing. You can cover it up with the chrome miler tape if you want. So here we go on the other side. Take your pop rivet, put it in the hole, pop rivet gone, pop rivet in place. There you go. Now these will be covered up with the tape. You can make the tape longer to cover the holes. Or you can paint these silver. Or you can drum these down a little bit. Have them covered up. Or what you can also do is drum around the circular part of the rivet to make it smaller so it won't be so noticeable. But this looks good for now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the aluminum square rods that I had and we're going to cut them from the length from the top to the bottom mark it off the pen we're going to cut two pieces exactly the same and uh, we'll be back alright take your metal aluminum rod here oh, sorry your aluminum metal rod here go from one end of the clamp to the other end mark it off with your pen you're going to make two of these Going to be the same length, same size. From one end to the other end. See where I marked it? Now that's where we're going to make our cuts. We're going to make two even lengths. Now, when you cut these rods, they get quite hot. So what I use is I use a small pair of vice grips to hang on to the rod. You don't want to hang on to the rod while you're cutting or you might burn your hand. To cut it all the way and sit there and you can just bend it and it should break off like so now we're going to make it flat as you can see it's a little rough on both sides Baby's hot, all right.
Luminescence number one. Let's work on number two. All right, we cut two aluminum square rods. They're about two inches a piece. What we're going to do is we're going to get our chrome tape, which is another important tool I forgot to mention. And we're going to tape these two together. Just cut a small piece of tape, chrome tape. Cut just a little bit. Let's see about half an inch. Cut it in half. Now we're going to use one piece for one side and the other piece for the other side. Make sure the square rods are even. Tape across. Tape across again. Get a razor and cut the excess. Make sure you get yourself a sharp razor like I don't have. I'm cutting the excess off from the sides. Give it a cleaner look. So you want a bunch of this chrome tape bunching up everywhere. It'll look really sloppy. Now there's also excess here. I cut the sides off. Excess here. I'm going to cut just a little bit. Of both sides. Making my cut just a little bit from the top. I just want enough tape to hold these two rods together. Take your razor, take off the excess. See how that looks? That's how you want it holding these two rods together temporarily put the excess on that side excess on that side now what we're going to do is we're going to get the chrome tape out again and we want to tape this whole piece together a little longer than this what we're doing is, well, it's about the right size. We're going to go all the way across and around and around. Feel where the other side of the tape is. Cut down the middle. I've been making these lightsabers for about almost three years. So I can almost do this blindfolded. Tape it up. Wrap it around. Go slow. Get all the air bubbles out. There you go. Two square rods taped up. Now this replica that we're making is an ESB. If you're making an A&H, you're not going to need this material here. But since we're making an ESB, let me show you what you need. This piece here is, I would say, 
If you had a piece of carpet, it is the metal that goes across to separate the carpet from the vinyl flooring. Uh, as you can see, it's curved here. Um, I've been looking around and I can't find any more at all. So what I've been using is a piece of tin. And I've been measuring it, cutting it just right. All right, now that I got this air duct metal squared off, you're going to want to measure two inches across with your square rods you just made and make your mark. Now you're not going to need this piece if you know what you're doing. Grab this metal, stick it all the way down. I can, I'm using this metal only to make my curves. Now you can make your own curves with your vice grips very carefully. Doesn't need, really need to be perfect. Cut the piece out. There you go. This is what you need. Now you can take your needle nose pliers. If I can find them. Now you can edge this out, a little circular motion here with your needle nose pliers. You just gotta make a little lip. Now, after you make your lip with the pliers, see how it's circular? Half circular actually. Take your needle nose pliers, you wanna squeeze it down just a little bit. Not too much all the way, but just halfway. And you want to go all the way down the air duct metal. And I'll show you why in a moment. Now you're going to want to make two equal pieces, this one and another one. Just like that. And what's going to happen is that we're going to use this for one side of the clamp and one for the other. And then this piece will fit right on top of the clamp after we edge it out. See how that looks? Now, if we're making an ESB, let me get my stuff out of the way here. I want to get an old ISA card. What we're going to use is we're going to use these gold plated metal fins. Um, we're going to want about two inches of here, so I'm going to dremel about two inches off this network card. Alright, I cut the network card fins. Measure across your square rods. Take your marker. Make your mark. And cut the sucker. Now this will be glued on top of two square rods. I'm going to take this piece that we just made, plus another piece I'm going to make later, and it's going to go right on top, just like that. Now 
Now, if you're not good at measuring like I am, what I would do is take your ISA, sticking on the air duct metal with the curve, backwards there, take your rod, push it up against where you made your curve at. And just make your mark on the other side here with your marker. That way you know where to cut. So you won't cut too much off to mess everything up. So let's cut this now. Tin snips. Tin snips is very good. You're going to need a pair of tin snips also. There you go. Trim it up a little bit. It looks a little long, so get the ISA piece, get your square rods you taped up, see the excess right there, that has to get cut off, so I'm going to make my mark, now I'm going to do a straight cut. Hang on to it with a pair of vice grips because this also gets hot. There you go. Perfect. Now we're going to make one for the other side and I'll show you what you do with your putty. And we're going to get some more chrome tape. We're going to tape up each side and go around with the chrome tape again so this can stay put. Now if you want also to have this ISA piece stain in the middle, you can get some crazy glue. That's if this crazy glue is good. And you can crazy glue this piece. Well, it looks like it's almost all crazied out. Crazy glue this ISA piece across. Crazy glue out. your ISA piece, stick it on top. Make sure it's centered in the middle. And let dry for how long greasy glue takes. Probably from 10 seconds to one minute. Okay, we got our two curved sides. But like I said, if you want, you can go to the hardware store and find yourself uh, what this piece actually is it separates the carpet from your vinyl flooring it gives it like an edge and see this hole here is where the nail is at and they stick it in there and they nail it down it keeps the carpet from fraying up so you can either get something like this it doesn't have to be exactly like this but as long as it has the edge the curved edge or you can make your curved edge yourself by just using a pair of needle nose pliers. Now since I made 
both edges equal same size um, it's gonna be hogging how the metals being showed I think maybe you don't think so but I think so so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my trusty super glue and I'm gonna super glue just a little bit on the side here stick an extra piece of metal right there right on top go by the heat lamp let it dry a little bit blow on it if you have to to make it dry faster go on the other side get some more super glue spray it on top apply the extra piece of metal on the other side of the piece we just made Try to make the heat light. I would not be held responsible if you super glue your fingers together. That is for sure. It happened to me twice. I just ran my hands under warm water. And uh, two minutes later, I was able to move my fingers around. All right. Take your super glue again. You're going to add your curved pieces to your piece of metal you just made. This super glue is really coming out a lot. So let's get off the excess. Stick it on. Let it dry for a bit. I need the heat and light. Okay, we're going to do the same thing to the other side. We're going to want to trim this up a bit on the bottom, but we'll get back to that in a minute. Let's let it dry a little bit. Alright, now it's a little bit uneven on this side over here, so I'm going to get my vice grips, put a little super glue in there. Another vice grip. Same thing to the other side, I guess. This is the first time this has happened. I guess I would recommend two pairs of vice grips. There you go. I'm going to let this dry for about a minute or two. And uh, I'll show you next where we have to apply the putty, which is basically where the holes are at. Where we made the curves on the duck metal. See right through it.
That's where we're going to put our putty. All right, we're going to let this dry a little bit and go from there. All right, you're going to want to take your epoxy putty here. And then you're going to want to mix it up. Baby up real good. You're going to want to fill these holes up. Like I said before, they're not supposed to be there. Putty. Real good. Look the holes up there. That was plugged up to the epoxy. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Alright, now that we epoxy both sides, we're going to want to get some chrome tape, cut a little bit off. And what we're going to do is we're going to stick this chrome tape right on the side. You're going to want to even on the bottom and just push it across the sides. Same thing on the other side. Push it across on the sides. Now you're going to want to cut the tape. Right on the corner. One cut. Two cut. Three. And four. And you're going to want to push down. They made your cuts right on the sides. Push that side down. Push that side down. And do the same on the other side. Now you can see we got the excess on top. We're going to want to cut that off. So just get your razor. Cut right on both sides. Now I did that. Push this excess inside. And you're going to want to cut it right on the edge. Just a wee bit. Screwdriver, we already got handy. Push it down the sides. There we go. Same thing on the other side. Alright, what we did is we taped up both sides. Left a little excess on the inside, right there, and right there. Now we get our chrome tape, and we're going to want to wrap this whole baby up. Start from one side to the other. And start the chrome tape on the inside. Have a little excess in the middle. Push down with the screwdriver. 
small screwdriver since I can't find mine. And work the tape. You can always cut whatever's hanging out later. Wrap it around. Take a blade and cut it right down the side. The same thing on the other side. And pop these off. One. Two. Smooth out all the air bubbles. There you go. Alright, now before we want to glue this onto the rubber gray flex, we're going to want to make our tape go around the sides here. After we make the tape, we're going to glue this piece right on top using the five minute epoxy. So, let me get the tape out. Start measuring around. Wrap the tape around. Can you see the other side of the tape? Make your cut. Now, like I said, cover these uh, rivet holes. You're going to take the tape and put it from one end of the square to the other end of the square right there. You're going to make your cut right there. So, let's make an even cut. Keep cut. Tape down. And flat. Cut away. See what I did? I'm going to measure this tape, see if it's the right size. Wrap it around. Looks like it's pretty good. Alright, let's put this tape on this clamp. And now we'll continue. Alright, I put my tape around the saver. You want to smooth out the air bubbles that are around the rib knot head. Stick your finger in there and even it out. A little crack there. Then you get a pen or your triangular. Triangular rod. The ESB had lines going through the tape, so you take your rod and start making lines all the way across, over the rib nut, don't push down too hard, you're going to push down right through the tape. And I'll keep on going with this and we'll be back when I'm done making the lines. Alright, I made my lines going back and forth. I want to do is make my lines 
going down all the way around the saber. All right, I made my lines up and down, back and forth, all the way around this tape. Now what you do is you get your razor blade, and where these little squares are at, here and there, and then the other side, you want to cut the excess tape that's covering those squares. Now, the little slit where I made a hole by the rib nut, you want to cut that little piece of aluminum out too, or the tape, I mean. Alright, slit's showing, squares are showing, the tape's covering up the rib nuts. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece and we're going to use our 5 minute epoxy and we're going to glue this piece onto the tube and uh, we'll be back. Alright, we're going to let this dry a bit. I glued it on top. I set uh, two rib nut guns inside to keep it in place so it won't move anywhere. And while that's drying, we're going to start on the ears. So, get your scissors out and start cutting the earpiece off. Alright, we got our earpiece cut off. Now what we're going to do is, we're going to cut this in half. Because I use a film canister for the emitter. And if I cut this uh, air duct or sheet metal, whatever you call it, the film canister will not fit. Cut it right in the middle. You're going to want to tape it. Alright, I got one half cut. I'm going to get your ruler out. You're going to measure three fourths of an inch. You're going to make your mark at three-fourths of an inch. Can't see it very well. There's the mark. Let's reapply the other half. I'll tape that side your scotch tape. Now get your sheet metal cutter or your tin snips, whatever you call it. Start cutting around. And after we start cutting this and finishing it off, we're going to trim it up with the Dremel. Now I use about, this is probably 20 gauge sheet metal. I wouldn't use anything that's less than that because the ears, the top part of the ears, they bend too easily. Especially if you're wearing this during Halloween and you're walking with your kids and it bounces off the leg or something. It's about 20 gauge. So I'm going to finish cutting this up and uh, I'm going to get the Dremel and start trimming this up. Alright, here's the rough cut. You're going to want to get your Dremel and you're going to want to cut pretty close. You're going to want to drill the holes with your 1 inch drill bit. And when you're cutting this, you're going to want to get your needle nose pliers while you're dremeling it. You ain't going to be able to hang out of this with your hand. Alright, so as soon as I get done dremeling this out, we'll get back. Alright, I cleaned this up a little bit with the Dremel. 
as you can see, I gem a little bit past right to here. So when you bend these tabs in, it would fit into the replica tube. All right, let's start making our holes. I'm going to get the 1 8 drill bit, start drilling these holes here. All four holes. Now, take this off. There you go. Now what you're going to do is you're going to want to hammer this out a little flat. So let me get my hammer out and we'll hammer this up. Alright. What you can do also is get your Dremel and just edge it out right on the side. Get your 180 grit sandpaper and we're going to sand this up. Do the same thing to the other side. There you go. Now I'm going to get my film canister out. We're going to stuff a rag inside the film canister. And we're going to make our circle that way with this piece of tin. Sheet metal, whatever you call it. All right, get out your film canister. Get an old rag. Stuff it inside the film canister. <clears throat> if you don't do this, the film canister will be too flimsy. And you won't make your perfect circle that you need on the ears. Bend the ears around the film canister. Like that. See how that? And when you get to this point, you're going to want to bend up to the other side. All the way around the film canister. Bend up on your piece. Keep on going around. Do this. Now after you do that, take the flanges here, bed them inward with your needle nose pliers. There you go. Congratulations, you just made your first pair of ears. Now also, if you want to make sure that if your holes are lined up, just take your drill bit and go back and forth. Now, the original Gray Flexus had a piece of metal on the inside. Well, we're not going to worry about that too much right now. All right, we're going to see if this. Now, before we insert the ears, 
onto a replica. You're going to want to get your silver paint and paint the inside. You get to paint at Toys R Us or any toy and hobby store. And uh, I use testers myself. And I'm going to paint the inside of this. I'm going to dry a little bit underneath the light. And what I did is I put about two coats of the tester silver paint on the inside of this tube. And what we're going to work on now is the D-ring assembly, which is almost the hardest part. So I'm going to try to teach you best I can to make that piece. Now get yourself some D-rings. I had a crap load of them from eBay. And what I do, I take my sandpaper, because there's a little, it's a little doll, a little black on the inside a little bit. I don't know exactly what they use these for. But I take my sandpaper, and I sand down the D-ring. Now you can go to the hardware store and probably find yourself some D-rings for about five cents a piece. Um, Home Depot might have them. Uh, Best might have them. Do it best, they call it. Ace Hardware. And uh, I'm not sure the company that makes the D-rings. But as soon as I look it up, I'll uh, apply it towards the paper with the parts I'm going to send with this VCD. So I'm going to take my D-ring and I'm going to measure the length of the stuck metal I have here. You want to get the metal just on the inside of the D-ring. Not too far out, it won't fit. And then I would measure about, I'd say an inch across. Make the mark. Make your mark across. Cut this piece off with your tin snips. That's pretty good. As long as it slides back and forth, nice and loose a little bit, have no problems. Now take this piece and you want to get your 180 grit sandpaper and sand this. Here it is, all sanded, both sides. Now what I also made myself, so I got myself an old piece of junk 2x4 and I nailed about six nails, kind of like a V. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Two here, two here, and two down in the middle. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take this piece of metal. I'm going to stick it right in the middle like this. And that's how I can make my bend for the D-ring to fit where the fender washer is at. Push all the way down, bring it down, all the way, and then you want to bend back up. See how I made the little curve? That's where your D-ring is going to go. Now I'll make you a little template of this so you know exactly where to hammer the nails. Get yourself an old piece of junk 2x4. Buy yourself some nails at the hardware store. Doesn't cost very much. I'd say about 2 bucks to make this. Now take your bent piece of metal that you have here. Grab your tube. This bent piece of metal is going to go closest to here. Just like that. 
Now what you can do is measure it out by your eye. Like I said, I'm not too good with measuring, unfortunately. Make your mark right towards the edge on both sides. Mark here, just mark on the other side. Take your tin snips and you're going to want to cut this. Alright, I found my tin snips. Cut it straight across where your mark's at. Straight and mark where the cross is at again. There you go. It's about the right size. These are a little sharp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Dremel and I'm going to round it off a little bit. Alright, I rounded this off on all four corners. Take my two, smack it on there, make sure it looks alright. Now remember the bent, the bent piece here goes right on this side where this clamp piece is at. Take your pen. Make a little mark on top where you want to drill your 1 8 drill bit. Now down here it's a little tricky because you got that hole right here. So you want to do it right below the hole, not too far down. Just like that. And you're going to want to get your 1 8 drill bit and you're going to want to drill these holes out. And after that I'm going to get the... Alright, I made both my holes. Take your two, put it right on top. Now, when you, you want to mark exactly where you made the holes at on this piece of metal, take your pen, mark exactly where you made these holes. We're going to get our drill bit and we're going to drill right where these black marks are at. Alright, I drilled my holes in my tube. Now what you're going to want to do, put your D-clamp inside this piece of metal. You're going to want to get your pop rivet gun and two rivets. Now we use epoxy on this, so this ain't really going to go nowhere. It's not exactly the Star Wars fan specs on making this piece, but it does the job. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the ears now. I'm going to put them through this hole. I'm going to get a couple screws, screw it in. All right, we're going to get. Our super duper replica gray flex here, and we are going to get a gray flex ears, and we're going to insert these inside the hole, just like that. Now you're going to want to get some wood screws. Uh, they're made by Phillips or Flatheads. 89 cents and you get about 36 pieces. Now these are a little bit long, so I'm going to drum about a quarter of it, not a half, uh, maybe about a half, and uh, we'll go from there. I'm going to take these wood screws and I'm going to screw down this ear with one side. I cut these screws in half. That's what I did. The other side.
All right, your ears were screwed in place on both sides. Now the ears don't quite look perfect, so I'm gonna bend them straight. Make sure they're even on top. They look really even. Um, if you have any glue or anything that's from your fingers or paint, sand it off. Cheap metal. As long as you don't hit the saber with the sandpaper again. Because we already sanded the saber once. Now, you're going to take your needle nose pliers. You want to get right on the edge where it starts curving. See where it's flat? See where it's round? And it starts going flat? Take your needle nose pliers. And bend it back just a hair. Both sides. There you go. Now what I'm going to do now is I got to drill my hole for my button. So I'm going to get my UHF connectors. Now get your UHF connectors. Rip them out of the package. So I don't have any nails. The blade. Gonna need both of these. And what I'm gonna do is see how the slides back and forth and we'll come off easily. So we gotta dremel this. So I'm gonna take my needle on those pliers. I'm gonna hang on to this sucker here. And I'm gonna dremel right in this metal piece right here. I'm not gonna touch this, I'm not gonna touch this, right in the middle. We're gonna cut this right in half. Now what I did is I cut this in half. Took this piece off, piece inside, push that out. You ain't gonna need that. But if you're making an A and H, this piece will come in handy because you can use a uh, a rubber, clear rubber stopper from Radio Shack, and this piece will be your bottom. I'm not gonna worry about that. We're gonna need this piece right here. We're gonna do it to both UHF connectors. We're gonna cut them just like this. All right. You cut them both. We're going to use these top and bottom button, just like the ESB lightsaber. Take your saber, and you're going to want to eye it up. Usually about. Let's measure this just to make sure. All right, what I did. Grab my UHF connector. I measured approximately where our original button would go in our original gray flex. I measured it, and it's exactly about one inch. So what I do is you want to drill right here, and I would use three sixteenths drill bit and drill on this side, and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. I want to do is you want to stuff a rag inside this tube because if you're going to be drilling from the outside inside you want to make a mark on the other side so what I did is I got myself one fourth drill bit and I drilled the hole here I drilled the hole in the other side now from the ears to the hole is about one inch from this part to down is about it's an inch and a half from here to here and it's one inch from this part to here. Now what we're doing is we're going to get our radio shack mini push button switches. Now like I said before we got a red one and a black one. So Let's use the red one first and see if this fits. Pull off the top. There's a screw here. Some sort. 
I want to make sure this fits inside the hole, which it does. All right, fits pretty good. Now we're going to make our little beer tap. Now, I have an original Gray Flex beer tap. This is from an original Gray Flex. So what I do is I trace it with my pen on the outside. Now I'll give you a, a, a paper that has this actual trace around it so you can make make it exactly like a real Gray Flex beer tab. So the beer tab goes right here, just like that. And we're going to put a push button switch there. I'm going to put this part here. And it's going to look pretty good. So let me get my sheet metal out. 20 gauge sheet metal, duck metal, whatever. I'm going to stick it on the duck metal and trace it around this. I traced my beer tab on the air duck metal. I'm going to cut around this with my tin snips. I'm going to trim it off with my Dremel. Alright, I made my replica beer tab. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble this on top of the lightsaber. But you're also, you don't want to make a small bend across. So I just use my desk over here. And bend it just a little. Now after that, you're going to want to sand it. You can sand it before you bend it, which I should have done. Or you can sand it after you bend it. So let's start sanding it now. There you go. All right, we're going to apply this towards the lightsaber. And I'm going to get my mini push button switches. Take your mini push button switch. Take your new nose pliers. And twist off the metal ends. Twist them right off. You don't need them. Now we're going to put this inside the saver first. those pliers stick it in the hole through the saber hold on to it with your finger now you want to get your bubble cup beer tab stick it on top get your washer that came with the mini push button get your circular screw Twist it on. Make sure it's even. Even those pliers to tighten it down a little bit. There it is. Now, we're going to get our red side. Red side is going to go on top. Now, we're going to paint this red. I'm going to put this on the other side. See how that's on there? You're going to get your UHF. It's going to go right on top. We're going to use our five minute epoxy. And epoxy this right on top. Now you're going to want to mix your epoxy. Make sure it's a nice foamy looking color. You're only going to want to take the edge of it. You're not, you're not going to want to dunk the whole thing in there. Or else your push button switch will not work. Right on the edges. I'm going to stick this right on top. 
careful not to hit the red button. There it is. I'm going to let this dry for about 10 minutes. Alright, now when the red push button is drying, I'm going to paint the black one red. So, you're going to want to get yourself some Tester's red paint and paint this up. Now, if you're a rich man, you can buy yourself two packs and just use two red buttons. But I like to conserve some money. So, I just paint the black one red. Just like this. Put about two coats on it. First coat I let dry for about five minutes. I put the set coat on. Let it dry for about 20 minutes. Um, if you don't let it dry thoroughly and you grab a hold of this red button when you're when you try and take it off, you're going to leave a big fingerprint. Um, you can't paint it without this because it's kind of like a support to have it dry. You can lean it up against something. I usually use a my scotch tape a stick in the middle and I lean into the side and let it dry that way all right while we're letting that red button dry we're gonna take our film canister and pop the top off now there's a lip around the top you want to take that lip off so get yourself a razor blade and cut around the lip because this gray top is going to fit inside the canister. Not on the outside like it originally was made for, but on the inside. So as you can see what I'm doing, without cutting the fingers off. Alright, we're going to want to trim this up a little bit. So this gray will fit on the inside of the film canister. I trimmed it up best I could. Now this is going to fit on the inside. Not just yet. See how it fits on the inside? What we're going to do is we're going to get our sink and faucet. Um, I haven't bought one yet. I'll get some tomorrow. And as soon as this is about halfway through, we're going to attach that on top. So. Alright. Since it's taking so long, for this UHF type connector to dry in the lightsaber. And it's kind of cold at night right now. Since I have a light going today, I make these at night. Um, grab yourself about four tacks. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut these tacks in half. And right when it starts, Right where the point is at, we're going to sand that off. You're going to want the straight part, but you're going to want to sand the point off. So let's cut these in half with the Dremel, sand the point off, and I will will return. tacks cut in half um, we're gonna put these inside the film canister to make our recharging pins uh, what you can do is you can paint these silver they're gold well you can find yourself some silver tacks but the only ones I was able to find last week were gold ones so a little bit longer than it should but in the next video I want to tell you about it's going to be how to make these replica clamps now I looked all over eBay for real replica clamps and I think it's a little bit too much money for me to spend on something like that so what I did is I just made my own I made it out of that 20 gauge sheet metal that you use your beer tab with um, and the ears on your replica clamp um, I use the same square rods, aluminum square rods. I use the same 316 toggle bolt. Uh, the screw on the end here is different. Um, the screws that come with the toggle bolts, if you buy them in packs, three packs, um, are a little bit too big for me. So I just use a smaller head. 
But I don't want to use the toggle bolt like the original ones that flip up. This will not flip up. You just gotta slide it on your lightsaber and screw it down with a Phillips screwdriver. It's pretty easy, pretty simple to make. Um, I've been getting about 20 to 25 dollars a piece for these. It takes me about an hour to make, hour and a half, depends how fast I go. Um, one night they made about 14 of them, and it took me a good eight hours to make 14, but I made 225 dollars for making 14 of these. So my next video, I'm gonna show you how to make these. Make yourself some extra money. Take your girlfriend out to the movies. Take her out to dinner. And uh, I'm gonna see if this is dry right now. Hopefully it is. And uh, I'll show you what else we're gonna do. All right, this is full dry. And as you can see, when I used my five minute epoxy, I did it on the edge. Push button still works. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make this little piece. It's a hold down. Um, the original Grey Flex has had them on the beer tab, so hold the beer tab down so you can slide the beer tab down and uh, take out your button. But we're just going to use a rib nut. We're going to cut the rib nut. First we're going to put the rib nut in the gun. Like so. Now all we're going to want to use is the head of this rib nut. So I'm going to get a needle nose pliers and I'm going to cut this excess piece off here. And I'm just going to use the end and I'm going to use my 5 minute epoxy. I'm going to glue this right on the end of the beer tab. Now I got my 5 minute epoxy and I glue the head of my rib nut right below where the push button's at. I'm going to let this dry for a few minutes. Hopefully it will dry longer than what the UHF connector did and we're going to start on the bottom next all right the gray flex is looking pretty good and what we're going to do is we're going to start working on the bottom pin now you're going to want to get your UHF connector and you're going to want to make a trace out line on your sheet metal air duct metal what is that? I made a trace outline right here. I'm going to cut this with my tin snips and I'm going to trim it up with my Dremel. I'm going to drill a hole through the middle big enough for the switch to fit into. And this sucker is going to fit right on top. So I'm going to start that now. And uh, since I've done that, we'll be back. Alright, I took my piece and I cut it with a hole in the middle. What you want to do is you're going to want to grab your replica. You want to put that piece right on top. Also, what I did is I made the bend again with my desk. Put that piece right on top. You want to grab your your other uh, push button, mini push button switch that you just painted red. Take the top off. It's pretty dry. Let this dry. For about half an hour. Take your screws off. Take your bottom metal pieces off. Just like the other switch. Pretty easy. Grab hold of the switch with your new nose pliers. Go through the head of the workbook saver. Stick it in the hole. Stick it right in the hole. Hang on to it with your finger. Grab that small circle piece you just made. washer, put on your screw, uh, 
I made the hole a little bit bigger so I can adjust this. So it can be pretty perfect in the middle. Alright, take your needles, pliers there. Tight you down. If it moves on you, take your finger, move it back in the middle. Like it's moving a lot. All right, take your little red button that you painted, stick it on top. Take your UHF connector, and what we're going to do is we're going to glue this on the bottom. So. While I'm gluing this in the bottom, let them dry. I'm going to teach you how to make your um, grips. Now I make these out of wiper blades. Alright, these are Trico wiper blades. Now the number on these are 43 180s. Um, I probably said 46 180s, but I was mistaken. It was 43 180s. Rip the package open. Rip it like you hate it. These little metal bars going down, take them off. As you use my teeth, use a pair of tools if you want. My teeth aren't too good. But I got insurance, that's what my dentist is for. There you go. Rip this piece off. You got this piece. Do it on both of them. Alright, both of them taken off, and I'm going to show you how to cut these. And after we cut these, I'm going to show you in a minute what they're going to look like. What they're going to look like. Alright, this is take 27. Alright. Now this is what your uh, wiper blades are going to look like after I show you how to cut these up. Now the ESB version, what I do is I, uh, I get like rib nuts, cut the head off. And I cut right in the wiper blade and I glue the rib nut right onto the wiper blade. Now you get a lot of vendors out there, I'm not going to say who, who actually give you this. And it's been already previously cut, but you're going to need yourself an Allen wrench and a bolt and drill into your real gray flex, which I would not want you to do. Um, I saw recently that Gray Flex resale bottoms are going for 80 bucks on eBay, which is crazy. So, what I would do is, I can, on my next video, I can show you how to make a three cell bottom. And you can make these without drilling a hole in your real Gray Flex. Just get a regular plumbing tube like, we're, like I'm showing you here. And we can just tape this on. And all I have to do is undo the uh, real gray flex bottom and screw in the fake one. And I'm going to show you, show you how to make. Alright, well, anyway, let's get going to this because I don't know how much tape I got left in this video camera. And I'm going to show you how to cut these wiper plates just right so you can make yourself your own grips. Um, so 43, whatever part number it was, you get a two pack. You get two wiper blades in one pack, and they're $5.99 to $4.99. Depends which hardware store or auto parts store you go to. And uh, right now, I'm going to show you how to cut these. So, we'll be back. Now, what you want to do is you want to get yourself your 43 180 wiper blade. Get yourself a nice, sharp razor. But for some reason, rubber tears razor blades up quick. So, what we're going to do is we're going to trim where this first mark is at. So, let's trim it all the way down. Get the mark. Try not to goof up and over trim and 
like I just did. And cut the outside of the blade. Alright, here you go. Take that piece and rip it off. This is the piece you're going to need, the bottom of it. Now what we're going to do is, we're going to trim this piece off. All the way down. Other side. Now the middle piece, you're not going to need. Just rip it off. This piece you're going to need. So what we're going to do is we're going to start cutting. Right where it starts to bend. See where it's flat? See where it edges out? Right where it's flat, we're going to start cutting that. And as soon as I start cutting that, I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like. Alright, take your piece. After you trimmed it up, separate it. This is the piece you're going to want to need. That's going to be the middle part of your lightsaber grip. <clears throat> now you're going to have some excess in the back. So you're going to trim that up. Alright, I trimmed it up. Looks pretty good. Now let's adjust this video camera down here. Now we're going to get our double sided tape. It's carpet tape. Uh, another important tool that I forgot to mention. out stick your flat side you cut bring on the edge stick your middle piece that you cut right next to it Stick your other flat piece right next to that. 